This video is an update of the North America construction framing softwood lumber prices for the very beginning of March 2023. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give you an update of what is happening with the construction framing softwood lumber prices across North America just at the very beginning of March 2023 and so explaining you know what happened in February and taking into account the latest U.S. housing starts data as everyone knows the construction uh, housing market in the U.S. is by far the largest consumer of all Canadian and U.S. lumber commodities and as such the very large home building companies in the U.S. drive the prices which are uh, quoted by the sawmills and the wholesalers and that's what we track Madison's Lumber Reporter FOB sawmill price mill gate price of wood every Friday 50 times a year since 1952. And so what we have is uh, we had some waffling up and down, really big slide of the benchmark lumber prices, the two by four prices across North America, Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce and Southern Pine dropping quite a bit at the end of the year as the home sales and therefore the housing construction market in the US slowed down a lot as people know because the mortgage rates started increasing. Um, the announcements came in the middle of the year and the increasing interest rates really affected the ability of folks to buy homes and put a little bit of a damper, which was intended as the uh, home selling got really quite heated there over the couple of years during the pandemic and the changes to society that we had in 2020, 2021 and parts of 2022. And so now the lumber prices uh, waffled up and down a little bit as the sellers and the customers negotiated to find out where is the new price level going to be as everyone's been wanting to know since the prices um, skyrocketed up to those unbelievable levels during uh, the second quarter of 2021 and in the beginning of 2020 when the first uh, lockdown and restrictions of COVID uh, really hit to society. And so previous to that for the 10 years, people got used to on the benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir, KD, two by four, number two and better, the standard construction grade uh, produced by the largest volume in British Columbia, Alberta, Washington State, Oregon, and a little bit out of Idaho normally had been somewhere around $250 US per thousand board feet over those 10 years from let's say 2006 to 2017. Did hit a previous uh, record high of $550 in the middle of 2018 when US housing um, numbers improved by a good degree. That level only lasted for a few weeks then moderating back down to around that $300 a thousand. And so when that uh, previously unprecedented, never before even imagined highs of 1600 and 1100 in uh, 2020 and 2021, around second quarter respectively, people just couldn't believe it. And so the questions have been, when do we get back to normal? So I'm telling you that now it is the normal and uh, we did print down on those benchmark Western Spruce 2x4s. They hit a low of $373 US per thousand and then uh, went up a few weeks ago in the middle of February to almost 500 and now uh, back down just a little bit. We are having an extended winter. This is some, some really harsh winter weather across the continent, which does prevent construction activity and therefore obviously why would anyone buy more wood when they can't even get to the job site basically and so um, i'm going to be doing another video on the actual um, u.s housing start and home sales data that uh, came out for january uh, in relation to my lumber prices just to give you a, a better picture of you know what exactly 
uh, the cause and effect that happens there. And so historically, around February, prices of lumber start rising in anticipation of building season in the spring. And we're nowhere near spring. It will come on quickly, but for now, we're still in quite some really deep winter weather and not good construction uh, season all across the continent. So let's look at the first graph and I'll explain to you what I mean and show you the actual data right now. And so what we have right now for the week ending March 3rd, 2023 is the benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4, number two and better at US $400 per thousand board feet, which is down $17 or 4% from the previous week when it was $417, is down $56 or 12% from one month ago when it was $456 is down $930 or 70% from the same week the previous year when it was $1,330 and is down $640 or 62% from two years ago when it was $1,040 per thousand board feet. So you can see there the blue line is this year. Uh, it did rise up a little bit during January, then started to drop back down. I'm thinking that because we're having such an extended winter, folks who would normally be buying now for spring are waiting. And because the market is soft, they're holding back even more to see if that price might drop further. Of course, it looks incredibly low compared to last year and the year before. But keep in mind that those prices were insanely high. You can see that 2021 especially into the middle of the year rising up to $1,600. That has, of course, never been seen before. And expectations are that we're never gonna see that again. That's not something to look to as a potential forecaster for any other year. Combination of circumstances that probably won't likely occur all at the same time ever again. Okay, and so makes sense, right? Uh, now, the reason that prices in the in the end of last year 2022 didn't drop like as people might have been anticipating incorrectly i'm just going to say uh, to come back down to that 250 the reason they really didn't drop that low was because a lot of sawmills curtailed now uh downtime and downtime and curtailment is normal toward the end of the year in the oncoming winter and slowdown of construction activity and lumber sales, taking maintenance time, giving staff vacation time, and of course, as the holidays come on across North America. Um, and in 2022, the sawmills began responding more quickly to market conditions in terms of taking production offline than had been traditional, again, during that historical time of 2006 to 2017 and even before that. Really, it's very expensive to curtail a sawmill and it's very expensive to bring it back online. You need to recall your loggers to get equipment back out into the forest, get truckers to bring the logs to the mill, workers in the mill, the mill running, and transportation to take the finished product out of the mill. It's a big, very complicated value chain and supply uh, transportation issue, both on feedstock coming into the mill and on finished product coming out of the mill. And so in the past, mills really didn't curtail unless they knew that there, there really was going to be a drop in activity so that the, it would be, the cost would be justified. And also the decision of when to bring the mill back. That's as difficult as to close. So because of the change in the economics, the um, situation with industry, with retail, with society in general, the way that um, we function in terms of um, the way that we buy, uh, the way that we, our appetite as consumers has all shifted, um, was probably happening incrementally over those 10 years, but really came to a fore during uh, 2020, 2021. So as the mortgage rates uh, uh, increase was being announced and then actually started happening, the mills started responding to take 
additional capacity offline while demand dropped. So prices did fall, but not by as much as they could have if all those mills had kept running at, you know, 80, 82 uh, percent capacity utilization rates as they ha have been for the past couple of years. And then at the beginning of this year, some of those curtailments ended and, and the mills that had slowed down in, let's say, November, December were coming back, but then other mills came offline and there was different reasons for that. Uh, some of it was uh, timber supply issues in the Pacific Northwest, Canada and the U.S., uh, other situations to make the mills decide, um, for now we're going to not struggle with this situation because demand is not that great and prices are not that great. Why, sh why should we struggle during this time? Let's wait a couple of months. So now as March continues on, and then April for sure, starting to have real spring weather and construction activity will come back, then we'll see where the mills are with their uh, manufacturing rates and how much demand there is for the wood. Right now, at the very beginning of March, we have, as uh, my regular viewers will um, remember, I talk about the sawmill order file, and it is barely a few weeks. I mean, <laughs> the mills are saying that it's into later March, but the customers are like, mm, I don't really think that, that it's that strong. I'm thinking like, because of how they know when they call around to the mills, the, when the customers try to get wood and they're quoted different prices at a different length of time that it's gonna take to arrive, they can kind of figure out like, where's the order file really, as opposed to where the mills might be saying it is as an effort to keep prices up higher, okay? And like I was saying, a lot of years when the weather is better at this time than it is this year, the sawmill order files, I mean, we have had five week order files at the beginning of March, at the end of February, because the large U.S. home builders are ordering their wood that they want to have at their site on the ground before they start their building in April, whenever it's going to be April or May. So we've got a delay for all of that this year because of the terrible weather and um, expecting, you know, breakup to happen rather quickly as this, um, you know, April and May, definitely the snow will be melting. And so let's look at some more graphs and I'll explain uh, more detail about what I'm saying right now. So these graph and table images come off the dashboard as I talk about um, my customers when they log in. The prices are updated overnight on Thursday, so Friday mornings or whenever it is that they get on the computer, they can see the new data. And this again for the Friday of March 3rd. The top line is that Western Spruce that I showed you the other graph. You can see the current price compared to the week previous and the month ago. The second line is the Southern Yellow Pine, two by fours on the east side. And the third line, Eastern Spruce Pine Fir, uh, coming out of Quebec and uh, New York State. Uh, the fourth line, that's your studs, two by four, uh, produced at the largest volume, so we call that the benchmark item for studs. And then you've got your uh, specialty item, Douglas fir green, two by four, coming out of the coast. That is uh, extremely popular with architects and builders on the U.S. Eastern Seaboard and for uh, custom home high-end building in uh, Texas, California, Florida, places like that. The bottom line is your plywood. You can't build a house without some kind of panel, either plywood or OSB. So here we've got Canadian softwood plywood coming out of Toronto, 9.5 millimeters. And you can see that that price is flat compared to the previous week and just very, very little bit up compared to the uh, previous month, indicating there might be a flattening out of the dimension lumber prices as well. It's hard to know, but it does happen uh, quite often that the panel, the plywood and OSB price changes do lead what's going to happen with dimension lumber. We don't know that yet, but in the coming weeks, we'll find out. These are the same items as we're just uh, in that table that you were looking at. And you can see how those incredible highs of uh, earlier 2021 and again 2022 threw everybody off and blew all of the normal what people would be planning 
to their business. You know, when the builders uh, or the sawmills make their plans three months or further in advance, and they're looking at these kind of prices that no one ever saw before, probably, I mean, in um, the foreseeable future, won't be seeing again. And then the second part of the graph there towards the right, things are leveling off, looking a little bit more normal, of course, at a higher level than what we were used to for the 10 years from 2006 to 2017, but certainly not the insanity of the highs and lows of the past two years. That one uh, line up above, the light blue line that's waffling up and down, that's your plywood that I was showing you in uh, the previous table. I would keep an eye on that to see what's going to happen. Will there be some uplift in those dimension lumber prices, those other five lines? I think so. I think that what we can say right now is this is probably the bottom for those uh, Western Spruce 2x4s at $400 per thousand board feet. It's running pretty close up to the cost of production in the very important supply basket of British Columbia, which is estimated to be around 450. All right. And so that's been a lot of information in a little bit of amount of time. Uh, I did have a lapse in doing my videos over the past couple of months just because we've been really busy and I get to take vacation and downtime for myself as well. <laughs> um, so now I'm back. Everything's I've been to the North American Association of Home Builders uh, big convention, huge convention. As I mentioned before, I was uh, speaking on the keynote panel there with Robert Dietz and the NAHB Economist. We'd had a great session, talked about, I talked about the lumber, uh, there were some forecasts for uh, the real estate, and then the um, actual NAHB forecast for housing. And what they're saying, like I said, I'm gonna do another video about housing uh, coming up here, but essentially, essentially the expectation is that this year, 2023, will be rather flat as we are with the uh, construction activity and then, of course, the lumber sales right now. But then 2024, next year, the pent-up demand that got stalled a little bit at the end of last year and just the regular macroeconomic cycle is expected to come back. The signals have been that in, the, in that longer, medium-term, uh, interest rates are going to start coming back down. So... That's all I'm going to say for now. Um, if you like what you see here, click like on my YouTube so that uh, other people will be notified about this video uh, if they might want to be interested in the topic. Click subscribe here on YouTube so you'll be notified when uh, I do my next video. And if you need more than just this tiny snapshot of information that I give, these few lumber prices, the little bits of information that I put on the website, go on my website, madisonsreport.com. The link is here in the caption and click uh, to subscribe and order a sample. And we'll send you for that week, the full list of the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track and the commentary explaining why those prices are changing. And if you do find that interesting, you can sign up to actually subscribe to the data to have access to my dashboard and see all of those 500 individual softwood lumber and panel prices every Friday when we update it. And you don't have to wait for me to make a video or put it on you or put it on my website and um, you'll see the whole list.